नमस्कार स्वागत है आपका दूसरे एपिसोड एपिसोड नंबर वन द सेकेंड एपिसोड ऑफ द पॉडकास्ट कॉल्ड पुस्तकालय वाला एज द नेम आई कम अप विद येस्टडे वी वर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक थ्योरीज ऑफ कॉन्शियसनेस विच हैव बीन पुट फोर्थ बाय अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल डिफरेंट थ्योरीज with slightly different understanding of what this might be what put forth by two people uh, one of them is susan pocket the other one is uh, john jo macfarlane john jo macfarlane is the, this is the guy i talked about yesterday and his paper was something i downloaded called the conscious electromagnetic information field theory or semi theory c e m i theory and the subtitle is the hard problem made easy this is what he thinks okay this is i'm reading this from wikipedia article on the wikipedia article about the semi theory c e m i not s e m i c e m i theory The starting point for McFarlane and Pocket theory is the fact that every time a neuron fires to generate an an action potential, a postsynaptic potential in the next neuron down the line, it also generates a disturbance in the surrounding electromagnetic field. This is what I. This is all previously understood. McFarlane has proposed that the brain's electromagnetic field creates a representation of the information of in the neurons. so before i continue i need to tell you this one thing that was uh, one of the cornerstones of the problems in this understanding what consciousness is which is the binding problem the binding problem is the question of how disparate areas in the brain fire separately but the conscious experience is unified if i'm looking at a pen the color and the shape and the the sensation of the pen they are all being processed by different parts of the brain but when i hold the pen and look at the pen the pen all these sensations combine to form the idea of the pen in my perception similarly with um things like if you this is a famous example by sam harris if you touch your nose with your finger distances traveled by the signal are different lengths but it feels very spontaneous so there is this um temporal spatio temporal binding problem what is spatio temporal the space and time temporal means changing in time basically kind of you know so em fields have this property that they automatically fulfill the problem of this binding and synchronization between different parts of the brain because it's all being done at the level of the electromagnetic field which is ever present everywhere you know so mcfadden thinks this is this is where the problem came up this is where i uh, kind of got confused by what mcfadden is saying McFarlane thinks that the EM fields could influence the brain in a number of ways. Redistribution of ions could modulate neural activity. Given that voltage-gated ion channels are a key element in the process of axon spikes, <clears throat> so here the argument is that since neurons can generate the electromagnetic magnetic field, and when is synchronized together become strong enough so as to influence other parts of the brain because of course the electromagnetic field can influence the firing of neurons this is a non sequitur nobody requires a circular network a feed forward network in the mind for consciousness to arise i believe there is i'm not sure i'm not a neuroscientist i don't understand most of the ideas you ideas <clears throat> talked about here and i'm not a part of uh, the whole 
discussion on this but it kind of feels like a classic um, problem of shifting the definition of consciousness into slightly about agency the fact that we feel agency that the fact that we feel like we are consciously uh, picking up this pen voluntarily picking up this pen should mean that this action means that the conscious experience is influencing the motor neurons of my hand and this is what macfarlane uses electromagnetic field downloads its inner state into the mirror uh, sorry into the motor neurons thereby uh, exposing itself to the world but that is not a necessity for consciousness to arise consciousness is why what i am defining it as is nothing but the subjective experience of being a human and all the feed forward networks and all the agency and all the voluntary actions can happen without the lights being on this is the problem of uh, discussing about consciousness because it can be conflated with so many different ideas and i'm not saying that those are wrong those are all very important ideas in understanding how agencies how voluntary actions are done and how do they differ from involuntary actions probably that that's one of the most interesting questions if solved can you can understand if something was an accident or voluntary the intention of a person would be visible to us you know that's an important problem and i have no expertise in any of those problems but all i'm saying is this this is just not exactly what i was talking about macfarlane proposes that the digital information from neurons is integrated to form a conscious electromagnetic information field in the brain consciousness is suggested to be the component of this field that is transmitted back to neurons now this is the problem i have transmitted back to neurons and communicates its state externally we are talking about different consciousnesses different definitions of consciousness here thoughts are viewed as electromagnetic representations of neuronal information and the experience of free will in our choice of actions is argued to be our subjective experience of the semi field acting on our neurons i don't think this is true i clearly don't think i don't think this is um, necessary for consciousness to arise that there has to be a circular network however now i came up with susan pocket's work which is a which is a different theory susan pocket has advanced a theory which has a similar physical basis to macfarlane's with consciousness seen as identical to certain spatio temporal patterns of the em field this is what we all agree all three of us <laughs> ki um, consciousness is identical to certain spatio temporal patterns of the em field however whereas macfarlane argues that his deterministic interpretation of the em field is not out of line with mainstream thinking pocket suggests that the em field comprises a universal consciousness that experiences the sensation perceptions thoughts and emotions of every conscious being in the universe now this is exactly what i was hypo- hypothesizing i'm not saying this is true i'm here to find the answer and figure out what people have done on this but i think she is talking about consciousness in the same way that i am which is the experience of sensations perceptions thoughts and emotions however while macfarlane thinks that the field is causal for actions albeit deterministically pocket does not see the field as causal for our actions and this is what i was talking about macfarlane is saying that field causes actions albeit of course deterministically it's all physics pocket does not see the field as causing the actions and this it it's not necessary for it to cause any action that's a non sequitur that's a red herring that's a that's a side bet 
that are that is being maybe that's true most probably it's true of course uh, feed forward networks are one of the most important ones in neural networks uh, feed forward feedback i'm not sh- i'm not really sure i'm not an expert in that also but uh, recalculating reusing the information from the previous output previous cycles output that's a very useful strategy to understand to save the state of the the whole network very organically saving the state of the last of the last cycle of the last output and reinputting it into the whole network that's important but that's not what we are talking about so i believe we already have crossed the 10 minute mark for today so <clears throat> i will stop it here and i will talk about susan pocket's work tomorrow because i think macfarlane's work is a little tangential to what i am doing so thoda thoda uh, samajh aaya konchum konchum um susan pocket ka kaam dekhna padega susan pocket's work we'll have to download and read and uh, not everything can be done in one day guys um i i'm sure a lot of you are listening right now all one of you um and we'll we'll talk tomorrow